and snap the lever. Now the upper ski. Zwar brät und mag viel, die Gaschnee, die Juche, die sie sollte mein Hecht den Gaudi. Zwar brät und mag viel, die Gaschnee, die Juche, die sie sollte mein Hecht den Gaudi. I say, whatever happened in my life, the good thing is, skiing was the springboard. It all happened through skiing. In 1936, he founded America's first professional ski school on Mount Rainier near the Pacific Ocean, along with Tyrol's Hannes Schneider, who had to flee the Nazis, Otto Lang helped establish skiing's popularity in the United States. This native of Salzburg made the transition to the film industry. As a director and producer, he would be nominated four times for the Oscar. To mark Otto Lang's 95th birthday, we take a look at an extraordinary life and career. Mr. Lang, why do you want to speak about your life? Because it would inspire young people to see somebody that left Austria with a lot of enthusiasm and a certain amount of experience into a world that was totally unknown to him and succeeded. Young people should get the feeling, well, he did it. Why can't I do it? Anything is possible if you set your mind to do it. Large areas of the United States are covered with snow during a good portion of the year. In summer, only the highest peaks will remain white. But in wintertime, the snow covers plains and mountains from the west coast to the Atlantic Ocean. As Europe sank into war in 1939, skiing was gaining in popularity in the United States. For the time being, the United States managed to stay out of the war. One, Two, push. Left leg, right leg. Through intense promotion, Otto Lang helped ignite the first real ski boom in the United States. He had gathered much experience from his time at Mühlbach am Hochkönig, St. Anton am Alberg, and as director of his own ski school near Seattle. Lang participated in the famous Mount Rainier downhill race. The takeoff in a terrain jump should be determined, pulling the knees well up to the chest. When landing, the legs slide into the slope in a long stride to absorb the impact. In 1939, Lang moved to Idaho. With Friedel Pfeiffer of Tyrol, he set up a new ski school in Sun Valley, this luxury resort was established by the railroad tycoon, Averill Harriman. Through his job, Otto Lang became friends with the New York billionaire, Nelson Rockefeller. If a fall is inevitable, take it easy and relax. To get back on your feet, line up both skis across the slope and beneath you. In Sun Valley, Otto Lang became friends with another colorful personality in his family, Daryl Zanu, the head of the 20th Century Fox Film Studio in Hollywood. Daryl Zanuck was a very proud man. He was not a very tall man. He was about five feet four, uh, so smallish, which uh, he f considered a bit of a handicap as a macho man. And he was a good athlete. He was a good, very good polo player and, and gymnast and uh, acrobat and things like that. But somehow skiing just, just he didn't catch on. I mean, he couldn't find that one little central position that would keep him in balance. And that's what I was working on mainly, to have him relax and go with the flow of the slope and with the speed. And eventually we succeeded and he became quite a good skier. In 1941, Zanuck began work on a film in Sun Valley which was a combination of musical and feature film. Glenn Miller performed the soundtrack, 
Otto Lang is named location manager as well as technical and athletic advisor. It's gay, it's exciting, it's something different under the sun, Sun Valley. The most talked about, read about playground and sports paradise in America is the locale of a spectacular musical comedy drama, Sun Valley Serenade. Starring Sonia Henning, so radiant, so beautiful, so romantic with John Payne. It happened in Sun Valley, not so very long ago. Pardon me, boy. Is that the Chattanooga Choo Choo? Yes, yes. Track 29. Boy, you can give me a shine. And they had one point in the story, there was a big conference, there two or three writers, uh, and they came all to Sun Valley and we sat around. They had to get the two people together. Uh, Sonia Henney and John Payne, who were the stars. And so I, I, I sort of raised my finger very timidly and said, I, I have an idea. There's a little cabin up on Mount Baldy, and uh, we could do it so that uh, Sonia Henney and John Payne stop, and she develops a plan. Sorry, I broke my ski. I couldn't try ski down. We just have to stay here overnight. And that was the whole story. And Daryl said, this is wonderful. Let's do it this way. And that's the way they did it. In 1941, with the help of 20th Century Fox, Otto Lang directs a training film for the United States Army. This is the first time this material has been seen in Europe. You now see the men going off on actual duty. They carry their rifles, pack sacks with full equipment, and have climbing skins on their skis. The skins, of course, will be taken off once the soldiers start downhill running. Long's training film is for the Army's 10th Mountain Division, who are expected to battle Hitler's troops in the Alps. built for skiing with a blunt square toe. Here, modern equipment was introduced based on Alberg skiing technology developed by ski pioneer Hannes Schneider. Long had worked with Schneider until 1929 as a professional ski teacher in St. Anton. These are made of hickory. They have a long parallel groove running from just below the tip to the end of the ski. At this time, alpine skiing is still considered part of winter mountaineering. There are no lifts or gondolas, so good bindings and climbing boots are especially important. The idea is that the ski and skin will slide forward to some extent, but will not slip backward. Because each of the thousands of hairs on the skin will act as a traction brake on the snow. There may have been some professional skiers, and there were some Norwegians, but they were mostly ski jumpers and ski, uh, performer, but not teachers. So actually, we from the Alberg, from the Hanischneider Alberg Ski School, teaching staff were the first ones uh, to come to America to teach organized, create organized ski schools and teach skiing according to a system. At the end of 1938, Otto Lang married the daughter of a U.S. Navy admiral. They soon started a family as the Salzburg native worked as a ski instructor. Usually for well-known regular guests, such as Nelson Rockefeller or, as seen here, Shah Reza Pahlavi of Iran. And later, also U.S. President Gerald Ford. Long's main job is in the film industry for 20th Century Fox in Hollywood. In 1948, he and James Stewart co-produced the criminal drama called North Side 777, which in Europe was released as The Cicero Case. Long's films and television productions are almost too numerous to mention, including many television shows for young people. 
In the 1950s, the Motion Picture Academy nominates him four times for an Oscar. One of the nominations was for Jet Carrier, which was filmed on board a U.S. Naval aircraft carrier. I didn't feel any different. I just said, well, isn't it nice? <laughs> isn't that nice? It was a nice reward and uh, recognition. Uh, as a matter of fact, I, I, I never went to an Academy Award uh, when I was nominated because I was shooting a film. I was away. So I missed all this, this excitement. In 1970, Otto Lang produced a documentary-like feature film for 20th Century Fox, which won recognition around the globe. Tora, Tora, Tora was one of the first major films to deal with a traumatic event in American history. The Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor in 1941, which led to the American entry into World War II. Richard Fleischer directed this production. Tora 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 shows the attack and the lead up to it from both the American and the Japanese point of view. Do you still feel as a Salzburger? To be absolutely truthful, no, I don't. I'm an American now, I'm sorry to say. Although in my heart, uh, there's still a lot of Austrian left, but which is good. But I've been here now for almost 60 years. Here in the Pacific Northwest, Otto Lang enjoyed the Pacific Fjords, the coastal mountains, and the city of Seattle. Seattle went from a fishing village to a boom town in 1898 when thousands of gold seekers on their way to Alaska and the Yukon bought their supplies here. I like Seattle, yeah. I, I get a lot of in Seattle that I got in Salzburg. And people talk about Seattle, about rain and so forth. I said, rain, uh, it, ridiculous. It doesn't rain that much. It rains. But I grew up in Austria and we have more rain than we have here in, uh, in Salzburg than we have here in Seattle, ever. 1918, the First World War ends. Otto is just 10 years old. His family are stranded as refugees in Salzburg. His mother was Croatian and his father was Austrian, an officer in the Imperial Army who for many years was stationed in the Balkans. Otto Lang was born in Zenica near the Bosnian capital Sarajevo in 1908. After arriving in Salzburg, the family lives at Steingasse 18, on the right bank of the Salzach River in the city's old quarter. Despite economic hard times, his father secures a job as the director of the post office in central Salzburg. After finishing high school in 1925, Otto Lang gets a job working in the parcel section of the post office at the Salzburg train station, although the teenager's real passions are skiing and sports. And I did for a while and thought, well, it it's, it's a living, I'm earning some money, but my heart was not in it, or the, the regimen of set hours and the kind of work, although it was interesting, it wasn't dull, I felt, no, it would not be for me to do this for the rest of my life. In 1926, the 18-year-old Otto Lang quits his job and tells his parents he wants to become a physical education teacher. He also plans on becoming a certified ski instructor. trains extensively with two school friends, Max and Hans Hauser, who will become professionals and will also have success in the United States as ski instructors. The Hauser brothers are from the Zissel Alm auf dem Geisberg, which overlooks the city of Salzburg. The brothers and Otto Lang were already going on ski tours in their early teens. At Mühlbach am Hochkönig in 1929, Otto Lang passes his exam to become a ski instructor he is certified by ski pioneer Peter Radacher, who remains a legend in Salzburg's Pongal region. Pongal in late autumn 2002, shortly before the snows begin.
Ja, man muss schon wissen, dass alles, uh, was in Mühlbach passiert ist, oder das meiste Everything in Mühlbach was connected to mining. Around 1905, a Norwegian businessman and his two sons came to Mühlbach and brought skiing to us here in the Hochtal. Things then proceeded very quickly. There were several dedicated ski teachers. Mühlbach was the first place in Austria where skiing was taught in the schools as part of physical education. In 1908, a ski club was established. In 1909, the first Salzburg skiing championship was held in Mühlbach. In 1923, Peter Radacher Sr. established the first ski school in Salzburg. Ski jumping, cross country, climbing up and skiing down mountains were all part of the atmosphere at that time. My father liked to encourage young people and specialized in teaching ski jumping. He set up the first ski jump in 1920. There is no other place in Europe where the ski jumping area is being used 80 years later. We just renovated it, and every year young people continue to train on it. Heuer haben wir die Chancen wieder hergerichtet und aktiviert, und jedes Jahr im Herbst wird speziell von der Jugend drauf noch fest trainiert. In 1925, Peter Radacher Sr. competes in a race at St. Anton am Alberg and becomes friends with Tyrol's Hanna Schneider. This is how Otto Lang came to work for Schneider. He would work for the ski pioneer for six years. An acquaintance with a visiting woman from the United States led to Lang's first job in America in 1935. This well-known film portrayed the drama at a ski school on the Alberg. In the film, a young woman signs up to take a course with Schneider. She's played by Lenny Riefenstahl who will later become Hitler's premier film director. At the time, Schneider had no idea he would eventually be forced to flee to the United States. Hannes Simon was an arch enemy of Hitler. He detested everything about Hitler and wouldn't have anything to do with him. And he openly spoke so, uh, demeaning Hitler and what he was doing. And of course, he paid bitterly for it because he lost his ski school eventually, was arrested by the Nazis and incarcerated. And a long story how he got free and could go to America later on. With the help of friends, Hannah Schneider, in 1939, moved to the United States, where he had been several times before. It was there that he was reacquainted with Otto Lang, far away from the Nazis. I had no interest at all. It didn't appeal to me, the regimentation and that all this hoopla and saluting and Heil Hitler. and uh, It just was totally alien to me. I couldn't find anything uh, uh, attractive in it, or that attracted me personally. I said, I don't want anything to have to do with people who persecute or pursue other people because they are of a different religious background or different racial uh, origin or different color skin. I said, this is truly ridiculous. We're all people. We're the same. In the United States, Lang and Schneider were treated like superstars. Lang's first ski instruction manual became a bestseller one of the paramount details for a flawless... Then came his first ski film. Nelson Rockefeller made sure Lang's film had its premiere alongside Walt Disney's animated film classic, Snow White, at Radio City Music Hall in New York City. Lang and Schneider organized major indoor ski programs in Boston and Manhattan, featuring appearances by ski teachers and racers. New York City's Madison Square Garden was one of the venues. One of Radacher's cousins was there in 1939. We did that for eight days, a performance in the late afternoon followed by an evening performance. After that, we were usually invited to parties and skyscrapers where I had performed an alpine tap and shoe dance with a bohemian harmonica player. <coughs> und so ein harmonika den ich zuerst den Landler vorpfiffen, nicht? Oh, we had great fun. 
This was basically promotion for Sun Valley. In New York, we gave skiing lessons, everything from the snowplow to parallel turns. Snowplow position, bis zum Parallelschwung. Then we went west, two or three days non-stop. Over Chicago, Omaha, Shoshone, and finally, Sun Valley, Idaho. This woman from Salzburg had not seen Otto Lang since 1935. They were close for many years, but separated when Otto Lang went to the United States. Was it love at first sight? <laughs> Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I was then very sad when I lost him, so to speak. She only found out about Otto Lang's Hollywood career when she read about our film in a Salzburg magazine. I didn't know he was still alive. Were you happy when you read it? Yes, and how. It was a great experience to find out he's still alive. My brothers are long dead, and I don't have anyone from this generation. It's also good to meet again with someone you really liked. Maybe you still love him, even after all this time. Oh yes, old sparks began to glow. On the one hand, I thought we couldn't see each other because then we can remember each other the way we were when we were younger, but we could still write to each other. They've been back in touch since the summer of 2002. Pletschacher does not understand English, so she asks a reporter for help. Dearest Barbara, I would like to send you the book I have written. It is the story of my life, but it is only in English. And when I receive new copies, I will send you one, but you will have to have it translated. And it is with great joy that I look at the photos which you recently sent me, where we are both young and so much in love. It made me very happy. And when you find other items from this time, I would love it if you could send them to me. What I find good about life right now is the fact that I can still get around without using a cane. A few months earlier in Seattle, Otto Lang explains how during long walks he reflects on the artist who influenced him in his youth. In the 1920s, Lang was the personal fitness trainer for the writer Stefan Zweig. Until he was forced to flee by the Nazis, this literary star lived in his villa in Salzburg. Yes, spiritually, intellectually, literally, musically, all these things, he, he opened my eyes in... in, in through the people that came to visit him. And there was a constant flow of famous musicians, authors, uh, and, and uh, composers, conductors, like Toscanini and Furtwängler. They would all come up and visit him. Otto Lang was also the director of the popular American television series, Doctari. It was only during our visit that he learned that the adventures of Clarence the Cross-Eyed Lion and Judy the Chimpanzee were also broadcast in Europe where they entertain millions of children. I played with her too, I pretended. You know. uh, I was sitting in my director's chair and studying my script and very con uh, pretending to be very concentrated. And I knew that she would try to run me over. So she would take a running start and she would come and storming in my chair, and tilt me over and that was a great, great day for her to get me out of my chair. Things like that, little incidents. She was fun to work with.